Welcome, fifth grade parents and students. We're going to be taking a look at topic seven, which is our first uh, topic in fractions, uh, using equivalent fractions to add and subtract fractions. So let's take a look at our chapter. In our first video, we're going to try to tackle all these first five. Uh, again, this is just using um, estimation, finding common denominators, adding, subtracting fractions, and then doing some questions that have um, uh, two-step problems. All right. In our second video, we're going to be doing the same exact thing, but we're also but this is going to be with mixed numbers. Again, a mixed number has a whole number and a fraction. Okay. So let's get started. First lesson. First lesson is fairly simple, and I'm not going to take too much time to um, go over it because it is fairly simple. Um, when you, you have two fractions, again, not, we're not dealing with mixed numbers, and we want to add them together or subtract them. Either one's fine. Um, all you have to do is tell me whether the fraction, in this case one sixth, is closer to zero, one half, or one whole. So those are your only choices of numbers you can write down for your estimate. That's it. Same thing with five twelfths. Is it closer to zero, one half, or one whole? So using a uh, series of number lines, um, essentially all I'm doing is taking a look again where this where this fraction would fall. So one six, we'd see that it's obviously closer to um, zero. So I'm going to write zero down. It was an addition problem. And five twelfths is it? Where it's, what's it closer to? Zero, the half, or the whole? It's closer to the half. So I would say this problem estimated would be 0 plus 1 half, which would equal 1 half. That's all you're doing. The only tricky ones are the ones with uh, odd numbers, and we would say that 4, four ninths and 5 ninths are right around the halfway mark. Okay, so you would have to make a judgment call on that, ninths, fifths, and thirds to uh, decide um, what, what you would run around it to. Generally, I would most, most of the time I would be rounding up if you're if it's ever in question okay all right so that is basically the first lesson where it falls on the number line your job is to just know what the halves are that's it and you should be able to figure out what it's closest to all right that's lesson one the second lesson is about finding equivalent fractions and common denominators. So uh, initially we have students partitioning rectangles. So we have thirds going horizontally, fourths going vertically. And look what happens if I were to combine these two. Well, this is what it would look like. And what did I just create? Twelfths. So I just created twelfths. So essentially, they again, this is a useful tool that you can use to, in the beginning of uh, creating equivalent fractions and finding common denominators. It's definitely something that you can do. But we know that in the end, it's not going to be the most efficient way to do things. So they did this with twelfths. Again, they are showing you what, what we just did. And they're showing, they're proving that one-third equals four-twelfths and one-fourth equals three-twelfths. Okay, I want you to notice the multiplicative relationship here. 3 times 4 equals 12, 1 times 4 equals 4, 4 times 3 equals 12, 1 times 3 equals 3. So common denominator, 12 is the common denominator, and we just found the equivalent fraction to go with that common denominator. So let's take a look at what happens if I do fifths and th two fifths and one third. So essentially what I did was I made my fifths going horizontally, you can see by the red, and I made my thirds going vertically by the orange color. So how many um, parts did I uh, break this hole into? I broke it into 15 equal parts. So again, take a look and count all the ones that we have here. So the common denominator is 15. So if I wanted to do this just purely mathematically, and eventually the students are going to see this, I can see that I am just having my fifteenths here, 15, and how do I make the equivalent fraction? I think about the multiplicative relationship. 3 times 5 equals 15, so 1 times 5 equals 5, 
5 times 3 equals 15, so 2 times 3 equals 6. So I have my common denominator and my equivalent fraction. Absolutely essential skill that you need to have in order to move forward in this chapter. Let's take a look at basically another explanation of how to do this because making rectangles isn't the most efficient way to approach this problem all the time. So the other way to do this is uh, another way to find common denominators, two ways. Take the two denominators, multiply them. So 3 times 6 equals 18. You can do 2 thirds and 5 6 equals how many eighteenths? Again, multiplying by 3, so this is 15. Multiplying by 6, so this one's going to be 12. That's fine. You can do that. The other way is to look to see if one of the other denominators, if the larger denominator, is a multiple of the smaller denominator. So, yes, 6 is a multiple of 3. So I'm just simply going to use that. So 2 thirds, 5 sixths. I'm going to use 6 as the common denominator. So this is a multiplying by 1, so that's 5. I'm multiplying by 2, so 2 times 2 is 4. So there's two ways that you can um, find common denominators. Okay. Let's do one problem just to highlight this. We have 3 eighths and 2 thirds. Eighths and thirds. Is, is 8 a multiple of 3? No, it's not. So I have to think of how to find a common denominator. Now I could just simply do 8 times 3 and get and use 24 as my common denominator. And so I know eight, 3 times 8 equals 24, so 2 times 8 equals 16. 8 times 3 equals 24, so 3 times 3 equals 9. Okay? In our next lesson, we get into using this, uh, using that skill of finding a common denominator and equivalent fractions to now doing some work with it, some operation. So this, in this case, it's addition. So if I have two fractions of one half and one third, I know that if I use my trick of two times three, I would use six as my common denominator. So if I wanted to use my fraction tiles, which again, another great tool to use, um, one half, I know that three of those six fit into one half, and for one third, I know two six is equivalent to uh, one third. But again, you don't always have fraction tiles available to you, so you would be able to see the multiplicative relationship. So if I'm using six, three times two equals six, so one times two equals two. Two times three equals six, so one times three equals three. And then I simply add it up and I get my 5, 6. So it's essentially the same exact thing we just did in the last lesson, but now we're just adding these things up. Sorry. Uh, so uh, the, the earlier example of 1 half and 1 third, um, what would happen if you just use 12 as the common denominator? So 1 half, 1 third, and what happens if you use 12 as a common denominator? Well, I'm multiplying by 4, so 1 times 4 is 4. I'm multiplying by 6, so 1 times 6 is 6. I add it together, I get 10 twelfths. Now, the only difference is that now I'm going to have to simplify. So both of these numbers, 10 and 12, are divisible by 2. So I'm dividing them both by 2, and I would end up with 5 6. Same answer as I got before, I just needed to simplify. Okay? Same thing goes here for this, for this example. We have 1 half, 2 fifths. I can multiply 2 times 5 and use tenths as my common denominator. Let's look at our multiplicative relationship times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4 times 5. So 1 times 5 is 5. I add these up and I get 9 tenths and that does not need to be simplified. And you can obviously see that in this illustration using fraction tiles. In our next lesson, it, again, it's the same exact technique, but we are now going to be subtracting the fractions. Now, the only difference is that when you're using the fraction tiles, this gets a little bit um, odd, but you would have to uh, find out one, two-thirds minus one-fourth, so two-thirds equals how many twelfths? Again, we're using three times four and using twelfths. We would see that that's equal, equal to eight-twelfths. 
and we would know that one fourth times um, uh, uh, one fourth uh, would equ be equivalent to three twelfths. So at this point, I would really not even think about this anymore. I just know that if I have eight twelfths, which is again what, what subtraction subtraction is, I have eight twelfths. I'm taking away three of those twelfths. One, two, three. That leaves me with one, two, three, four, five twelfths. Okay, so again, if just using equivalent fractions uh, without the fraction tiles, um, again, we, we have our equivalent fractions. 4 times 3 equals 12. 1 times 3 equals 3. 3 times 4 equals 12. 2 times 4 equals 8. 8 twelfths minus 3 twelfths is 5 twelfths. So let's do this example of two-thirds minus five-ninths. Two-thirds, ninths. Well, is nine a multiple of three? Yes, it is. So I'm using ninths. So uh, three times three equals nine, so two times three equals six. So now I just simply subtract six ninths minus five-ninths equals one-ninth. Okay, same exact technique. We're just now using it for subtraction. So you can see how important that earlier lesson of finding common denominators and equivalent fractions actually are. Um, again, that's going to be the beginning and end of, of our success in this uh, chapter and beyond. Okay, now for this last lesson of the chapter, we're basically just combining all the skills that we've used so far into two-step problems. Kayla had nine-tenths of a gallon of paint. She painted the ceilings of her bedroom and bathroom. How much paint does she have left after painting the two ceilings? So we know she has nine-tenths, and then she's using two-thirds of a gallon and one-fifth of a gallon. So we have to figure out how much total paint she's used. So we need to do two-thirds and one-fifth and let's use 15 as our common denominator because you're just multiplying those denominators together. So 5 times 3 equals 15. 1 times 3 equals 3. 3 times 5 equals 15. 2 times 5 equals 10. So I have 13 fifteenths of paint used. So I have to use now subtract that from the 9 tenths she had originally. So 9 tenths minus 13 fifteenths. Now again, finding a common denominator is going to be a little bit different for this one. I'm not going to multiply 10 times 15. I'm just going to use my 15 times table. And I know 15 times 2 equals 30. So let's, and I know that works for our 10. So I'm multiplying by 2. So 13 times 2 is 26. I'm multiplying by 3. So 9 times 3 equals 27. 27 thirtieths minus 26 thirtieths is 1 thirtieth of a gallon she had left. All right, so that's an unusual problem. Uh, she barely got that done. But as you can see, all we're doing here is now applying our skills that we've learned into using them for two-step problems. That's it. Okay, so again, if you are not able to find a common denominator and if you are not able to make an equivalent fraction, that is something that you absolutely need to have. You need to have that skill in order to succeed in this chapter. All right, I hope this first video was helpful. And be on the lookout for our next video where we will continue with mixed numbers.